O God, and giving it the word, Lord, that he will speak a word in season to those that are weary. Father, we thank you that your word is blessed, Lord, and it will find those, mighty God, Lord, who needs healing. We thank you for this word that is forever settled, mighty God, Lord, that it will give life, O oh God, to one who needs it. We thank you for this man's servant, Lord, that will come forth, Lord, and bring this word, Lord, with wisdom, with knowledge, and understanding of the kingdom. We thank you for Prophet Jerome, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. We say glory, glory, glory to our God, glory to our King. Amen. King eternal. Thank you, Jesus. And we are his servants. Hallelujah. It's a blessing um, to be here, you know, sharing with you. I have some friends all over the world. We have passed, uh, um, yes, we have, we, we have Apostle Emmanuel, hallelujah, from Nigeria. Amen. He joined us um, just a little while ago. So a lot of the discussion, you know, he missed it. Um, Apostle Emmanuel from Nigeria, greet the people. Hallelujah. It's a blessing always to have you. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, happy Sunday once again, everyone. And a happy new month for a new season. I want to believe that the grace of God will continue to be with us and continue to strengthen us and keep us um, keeping on. Um, I just have this word for us that the Bible said, uh, it said, those that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit. That no matter what the situations, because you know God, remain strong and you will do exploit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful word, my brother. Those who know their God will be strong and do exploit. Exploit comes from, um, that's the root word to dynamite. That's the root word to explosion. Amen. That's great success. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Amen. You see, Amen. when you know God, you have won your battle. Just by knowing God, you have won all your battles. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Praise there is so much revelation that flows through my mind when I make a, a statement of truth that sometimes if you are not disciplined to remain on track with what you come to say, you can't just dive into it. You can't just move into it because I'm saying, I did not see um, prayer in Genesis until sin came in. Somebody give God praise. Adam was not praying so much before sin. Men began to pray in Genesis after sin. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Am I discouraging prayer? No. I am telling you, I'm not discouraging prayer. I am encouraging fellowship with God. If we fellowship more with God, we pray less. Prophet, oh, you are discouraging the people from praying. No. Many times people pray because of situations. But when you are in the presence of God, hardly do you pray. You soak the presence of God. Hello, somebody give God praise. Mm -hmm. And then you go out there in demonstration. Somebody give God praise. Praise the, the Lord. The power of God would manifest through your life. You don't need so much prayer. And prayer does not even have to be so long when you see God is over you. You just speak one word. You speak two words and things would happen. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prophet, are you discouraging prayer? No. I'm telling you that God's plan is not, and that's not the message, God's plan is not for us to be praying, 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 praying. Praying is good. God's plan is for us to demonstrate his power Amen. through our lives. Hello? Wow. I know some people will not say amen because they think the purpose in the office is to pray. But listen to me, your purpose is bigger than praying. Hallelujah. Your purpose is to be a temple. Your purpose is to carry God, just like Mary carried the child. Somebody give God praise. Your purpose is to carry God and that God can demonstrate who he, who he is through you. But let me tell you what prayer does. Prayer, prayer is you now as a priest. Amen. 
you you behave as a priest in prayer and show me one priest in the miracle that perform one priest in the bible old testament that perform great miracles you will not see that it's about give god praise the priest the, the the duty of the priest was to represent the people on behalf of god so carried the sins of the people amen to the lord now you could you can operate um, in free offices under God. You can operate as a priest, you can operate as a prophet, or you can operate as a king. Somebody give God praise. Mark those three offices. These are three top offices that one can, can operate in God. Now, I need you to get all three. The priest, he handles prayer and he handles the sacrifices of the people. Now, that is very important. But that's not the greatest power of God. The prophet handles the word of God. Amen. So represents the people and also represents God and carries the power of God to the people. Hello? The king, the king operates in the authority of God. Hallelujah. In another territory or in the earth. It's about give God praise. The king literally holds more power than the prophet. Prophet. I thought the prophet holds more power. No. The king. Somebody give God praise. Oh, don't fool yourself when you hear people say they cast out demons and they say they have power. Power is authority. The king under God holds more power than the prophet because the king is in charge of the land. Somebody give God praise. Oh, you'll see all three anointings. Amen. So let's look at Jesus. When Jesus came into the earth, hallelujah, he came in the highest power. He came as a king. Somebody give God praise. He also operated in the office of the prophet. And sometime he was the priest, so he became our high priest. But look at his anointing in the earth. You will see more of the kingship anointing in his life, which was the greatest. Now, as a king, he did not do so much praying as a king. He did more demonstration. He just spoke things and things happened. Somebody give God praise. Hello? You see, I'm not hearing amen, so we can just put it there because maybe I should not share that message yet. Maybe I should wait maybe three, four Sundays to come with that message. And come with other messages to prepare you for this message. Maybe you, some of you are not ready for this message yet because you say, I messed you up. You would like to pray. And you tell me, oh, prayer is your life. So, prophet, don't preach that message yet because I believe my purpose is to pray. Well, let, let, I will, well, I'll show it to you. You see, what we need to understand, what we need to understand with God, God flows at the highest power. He said that he is king of kings. He never say that he is Priest of priests. Hello? Mm -hmm. He said he's king of kings. Amen. The highest title he holds it, which is a king. And then he said to us that you are a royal priesthood. We are his ambassadors in the earth. Remember I tell you the king has jurisdic jurisdictions where he's, he would place you over territories. In fact, the earth has been given to us. But you know what we're doing in the earth? We're living it for the devil. My God, my God, my God. We can never reign. We can never reign, hallelujah, as king if we do not take our jurisdiction over the earth because that's where he placed us. You know what we, do? You know what we did with the earth? The devil fooled us and made us get into religion. So we tell everybody, forget about the earth, leave the earth for the devil, and let's, let's go for heaven. It's a back-to-front thing. This whole thing is a back-to-front thing. Everyone wants to go to heaven. Hallelujah. And the people in heaven are so disappointed in us because now they see reality. They see why more of you want to come up here when we're supposed to take control down here. Somebody give God praise. That's the danger about religion. And let me, uh, I can tell you so much about religion. Now, remember, I, I am sharing this thing and I'm, I'm using open mic. My mic is not closed. So um, um, 
Apostle Emmanuel can come in. You, you, you all can come in. I'm not those kind of preachers who come in and they, they, they are afraid of other people coming in. You can tell me I'm wrong. You can tell me I'm right. You can come in. I want people to come in when I'm speaking. If you have a question, interrupt interrupt me. Get, you can interrupt me. I'm not putting scriptures on, on, on the screen yet. I am more... I need to dialogue with us. I need to dialogue with us to know why, why we are here. The reason why we are here on earth is to dominate. At Genesis 1.26. Somebody take it, read it, please. I don't want to move that screen to go into the scriptures yet. Somebody read Genesis 1.26 to understand our purpose in the earth. Let nobody fool you. If you are in this earth and you do not have the mind to dominate, and the word dominate means to be in charge, then we will suffer down here. Somebody give God praise. We will suffer because that is why we are still here. If the plan that we are using cannot have us to dominate, then we are in trouble. We are already in trouble. We'll be servants. We are, we, we are enslaved by the Babylonian system. You know? Yeah. We have to be free. Can somebody read Genesis 1.26? When you get it, read it. But what, I am, what I'm trying to get across to us here is the three levels that we operate by, prophet, king, or priest. There are times you have to operate as a priest. But that's not where you dominate. You don't dominate as a priest. So all of us would like to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. That's good. But you cannot dominate the earth just by praying. Somebody give God praise. Oh, I'm so happy that this is recorded, um, Apostle Emmanuel. Because some people need to know that. You cannot dominate just by praying. Because in Genesis 1.26, um, even in Genesis, when you go to um, 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 chapter 1, when God said to Adam and Eve they need to dominate, it was not through prayer. Somebody give God praise. It was not through prayer. It was through the authority that God had given them. Amen. Over everything. But the mm -hmm. devil fooled us and tell us, go and ask God for something that God has already given to us. Go and beg God for what God has already said I have already given to you. So all of us are before God, years and years praying, begging for the things that God has already given. Back to front theology. Reverse psychology. Reverse theology. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said that my people are destroyed in Hosea chapter 6. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Amen. Because what? We rejected knowledge. God said, you reject knowledge, I reject you. Ah, so, so if you think we can just come before God and say, well, I did not know. So Father, accept me for who I am. Accept me for what it is. God said, I reject you because you rejected knowledge. There's nothing I can do for you. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. What is Genesis 126? I, I call for it. Can somebody read it, please? Amen. Amen. He said, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the bird of the air, the, and over all of the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. And the verse that make me even, what you are saying is verse 28. It says, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it using all its vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion wow. and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at it. So what's our purpose down here? For sure, there is no religion in that. There is no religion in that. There is no going to church in that. You can put all that if you want, but there is no going to church. God said, let them have. And by the time God said, let them have, they had already received it. Are you there with me? By the time God said, let them have, they didn't have to go into prayer. They didn't have to go to pray to have it. They have it. They already have it. All they had to do was to execute it. But let me tell you what religion have done. And I'm a victim of religion. 
I'm a victim of religion, so I, I have I have I have a right to talk about it. So if nobody wants to hear it, I can help myself with it. Listen to this. Religion have taken this right away from us and have told us, go and pray now. And you believe, oh, go and fast and pray. You can never fast and pray for dominion or authority. God will not give it to you for praying and fasting. Because it has already been given to you by will. It has already been given to you in the kingdom of God by will. You have to believe it and execute it. But I'll show you something. This is not a spiritual, is this is not a spiritual principle. This thing was given to man, all men. And when a man who is not in covenant with God, who is not in the kingdom, goes out there and do what that would say, God blesses him. It has nothing to do about who knows God and who does not know God. Even the Muslims are blessed if they understand that authority. Yes, I see your hand up. Please ask me the question. I just wanted to add a little piece because yes. I say man started with the, on a good note and it resonated in my spirit when he said that those that know their God. Mm -hmm. that, Very good. Because if you know God, that means you know you are acquainted with him. You know everything about him. You know what he's like, what he dislikes. You know what is his, the truth from error. Then you will be able to do what he wants you to do. Be able to do exploit because you are not ignorant of who he is, of who he wants. You see? So that word he mentioned, when he said, know their God, it just resonated in my spirit. He said, wow, if you know God. Yes, you know. knowledge. You're so right. If you know him, you shall do exploit. Amen. You see, what we need to understand, people, there is one thing we, we have to undo the damage that religion have done to us. We need to undo it in our mind. It was Bob Bali, Caribbean um, um, superstar, reggae superstar, who said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. No one but ourselves can free our minds. All right. I want to um, yes, come in, my brother. I, I realize you're coming on. Emmanuel, come in. You were saying something? Yes, I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to uh, contribute to what was being said. You see, the gospel, a lot of things are being said about the gospel, and sometimes in as much as we try to make people believe one part and the value the other part is not really healthy. Mm -hmm. The gospel is balanced and complete. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the recent time, I began to discover some things, like I said the other time, and this time around is scripturally backed up. Um, if you read Second Peter, I'm coming. Second Peter. Um, if you read that scripture, you will understand what I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, one minute, let me try to say the scripture out so we all can. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 16. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you read that scripture now, you will understand what I want to say. You know, the epistle was written by Paul. Mm -hmm. And you see, the revelation of Paul was his personal encounter and his understanding. But you see, the script the bible between matthew to john where the real account of jesus christ's teachings preachings prayers and miracles are you understanding me but you see over time we try to emphasize on the epistle and leave the real account of the gospel now yes genesis stated the way it started there were less people on earth then so there were less contention but there's only one contention at that time when the earth was created the only one contention was the devil which was the serpent now at that time man still had the same dominion as god are you understanding me I'm so there were no need for there was no need for any form of warfare or prayers okay all they just did was just to commune with god but after the fell of man, we enter into warfare. We enter into it by choice. 
okay, and by circumstances, because of the choice that man made, now we now enter into warfare. And that is why the scripture will say, Jesus was the one that said it was not even the disciples. He said, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. It was the statement of Jesus, not the statement of the disciples. I want you to understand that. Mm -hmm. He said, the, the violent take it by force. Now, this was the words of Jesus. It was still the same Jesus that had to teach them how to pray. I think in Mark 9 or so, where he said, our father, prayer is not taught, prayer is done. Until you begin to do it, you may not be able to understand it. So I understand the point where you are preaching or trying to emphasize on, but we must understand that uh, there's what we call dispensations. The beginning there was a, the beginning of man was in, it was a dispensation of power. When I mean power and authority at that time, we don't have any contention then. So but after the fall of man, we enter into another dispensation. And that was why Cain killed his own brother. That should tell you the level at which there was now a contention. So the contention we have now in our time and even the time to come, we have contention with the devil and our fellow human. And why do I say so? The devil is the one we are not seeing, but we are seeing some of his activities through humans, where you have the, the people become jealous of their own brothers, or of their own sisters for no just cause, and trying to betray their brother or betray their sister just to be above or to, to prove a point. So, Prayer is essential. The same thing is essential as commanding the word of God. Every part of the gospel is important. No part is less important. But it depends on the circle of influence you found yourself. If you don't find yourself in the midst of war, you will not think there's a need for you to pray warfare prayer. Okay? Just like um, um, I must, you must have heard of Sunday Adelaja. It's a Nigerian that had one of the largest churches in Europe. Now, when he went to Soviet Union, then that part of the world, you know, they don't believe in Christianity. They don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in so many. But what gave the guy an edge was he was in prison and he was praying. And somehow his case was like the case of Joseph. And you have some government officials who work in the government, in the presidency, and they were sent to the prison. Somehow he got to hear about it and he told them, can I see the president's child? If I pray for him or her, he will get well. And they're like, what are you saying? He said, can I just yeah. see him? The president, and I think it was his son, was sick. That they have spent, imagine the president at that level with all his money, yet they could not have a solution. And so one of the officials who, was, who had been to the prison and went to meet the president said, I met a man in the cell. Is a Nigerian who we put in the cell for not having papers. But he says something that if we allow him to see your son and let him pray over your son, your son will be where the president says, What are you waiting for? Go and bring him. Let him come and show the power that he has. If medical knowledge and skill cannot heal my son, go and bring that young man quick. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Listen to you. That was how they went and they brought him and they showed him the boy. This is the boy that is sick. I'm telling you a real life experience because I met the man firsthand. The first time he came to Nigeria, after 30 years he has been in, in Europe, I was with him and he was sharing his, his a real life experience, I'm telling you. And they brought the president's son to him and he held the boy and began to pray. Before their eyes, I think the case of the boy was more like, like an imbecile. It was not an imbecile, but you know, we know imbecile under medical analogy is, is a cerebral, whatever, whatever dysfunction. When the cell and the cerebral, whatever, connecting the brain and all the nerves are not functioning well, the child began to act like an animal. So he began to pray. In their presence, the boy began to get normal. And by the time he finished praying for about 30 minutes to one hour, the boy became sound as though he was not sick before. And the president said, and we have this kind of president saying, well, he said, 
He said, what is his case? He said, they should cancel the case the guy has. And they gave him document immediately while he was in the president's house. And they asked him, what do you want to go? He said, well, and that, he said he is a Christian and he wants to establish church. They say, is that what you want? What else do you want? And that was how the government gave him property to start church. Of course, as you know, that the first attendee was the president and his cabinet. And that was what gave him influence and affluence. Are you understanding me? Amen. So even as you speak in authority in the word of God, your authority in the word of God can only be effective with the knowledge and the power of God. And how does the power of God come? It is through prayers, not just through the knowledge alone. Are you understanding me? So this is what I just want to impute so that we understand some of all these things. And over time, we help people around us. I was, speak, I was praying for somebody in, in Australia. And I think one of my friends was praying for somebody in Europe, a white woman, and a white man. Okay, you can imagine a white man, the, who is a European, full-fledged European, the white one who gave birth, and they were having come, they had to call Nigeria for prayers. And the prophet began to pray, and the woman gave birth. And they sent the video to him, and he sent it to me, because he also reached out to me to pray. Now, I was praying for somebody in Australia, and I said, the white, because of their level of exposure, they believe there's nothing like God, there's nothing like miracle. But you see, by the time, Time all their technicalities and knowledge and technology fails when they are left with no options. There and then they know there is a miracle when somebody pray. And I prayed, and some things happen. And the guy said, Apostle, he said, What you have just done is something that we cannot imagine. This is a miracle. You understand? He said, Now we believe there is God. Now I could do the prayer not just because I have the knowledge, but because I have the power. And most times you pray not because you have a challenge. We should understand that our services to God is all encompassing, both in our giving, in prayers, in studying, and everything. It's not one-sided. Okay, this is, this is what I want to contribute to this message as the Lord will help us. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you so much, um, Apostle Emmanuel. Uh, I'm going to engage you on this, which we received it very well. When we look at the prayer and we look at the authority, remember I shared with you, I told you there are three graces, the three top graces in God man operates by. King, it can be kingship anointing, which is the king, that's the highest authority. There is a prophet, you know, that shows great power for God, you know, and, and do things. And there is also the priest, the priests part doing a lot of praying and they offer the sacrifices of the people before God. Now, we operate in all three graces in the earth, but the one that have the dominion, the one that shakes or, or, or changes the earth is the kingship anointing. So I agree with all what you shared, um, but we can see the three graces in it. One, with the prayer part, the earth, we've been doing a lot of praying, but the path for the kingship anointing, we are very weak in this area. We have not been dominating. So what you find, you find a lot of people, they give more time to praying, thinking, okay, this is the medium by which we will dominate. So if we pray, we can subdue all forces or subdue all powers and then take over the earth. It will not happen. It will, it will really not happen that way. It never happened that way with Jesus. Amen. You see, when you, when you operate as the priest, which is good, we need that. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. You deal with the strongholds of the enemy. That's very good. But then you need to, for you to dominate now and have anything, you know, physical or to really take over, you need to come out in the kingship anointing to dominate. So that's why the Lord put it so in Genesis and, and looking at uh, Genesis, which is a literal, you know, you're looking at the earth. So God is saying, I give you dominion. Now that was before prayer. That was before prayer. So that's why I said to us, there are many people who do not know God, who don't really pray like we pray, but they are dominating 
and we are not dominating in, in a lot of areas, we should be dominating. So it is not prayer that gives this one. Are you all following me? Hello? Yes, prophet, 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 I have something to say, sorry. Yes, Look yes, Bill, yes Bill, come in. Bill, yes. Bill, never pray in his life. What did you say? I didn't I didn't get you clearly. Prophet, what I'm saying, Bill Gates never pray in his life. Bill Gates. Well, I don't but know he if he's praying, but uh, he has all those monies, you know, doing mischief and whatever. But you have a point. He know he understands the secret of dominating. He knows how to dominate, and he's using his money to do that. So when we put this now into um um into proper perspective. Whilst you are, um, you are striving, you are succeeding in one area, that's a priesthood area, you are very good at your worship, your praying and all, you could, you could have your pocket broke. You could have no home. You could have no money. The children, there is no food to give them and, and so many of those things. And you, tell, and you tell God, I'm praying, I'm praying. Of course you are praying. And nothing is wrong in that. You are praying. You are helping people with miracles and, and, and you are performing all this, but there are areas in your life that are weak. It's because we don't understand those three areas, how to function in them. So in as much as I'm a prophet, I could be praying, 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 but there is no food on my table. Um, but I'm saying I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm giving, I'm giving tithe, I'm doing all this. But am I going out there and exercising the dominion authority? Am I going out there to exercise authority, to literally take over, literally take over? Are we preparing our children to dominate? Not just depending on, oh, those miracles of God will throw something from the sky. But are we preparing them to dominate? And that's where the enemy is beating us and we are failing. Yes, I see another hand. Evangelist Magdalena. Yes. Okay. I saw your hand. Since you can put up your hand or, or you could come in. I, okay. I am not. Can, can I? I'm sharing an can open I, mic. Yes. Go ahead. Can I say yeah. something? Can I say something, Brother Jay? Yes. Come um, in, Shirley. I feel like I agree with both of you. Both of you. And I think um, in order for us not to stray from that power that we think, well, that we know that God has given us, we have to dwell in prayer. We have to speak to him at a consistent pace so that we know for sure that whatever word, that whatever um, vision, whatever dream, whatever prophecy that he's given us, we know that it is in alignment with him. And I get where you're going with what you're saying. At this point in time and for a long time, people have not been, you know, um, working in the area of authority which God has given us. And this is where you're going with that, I think. But the other um, pastor who spoke, he spoke from an area where he's talking about uh -huh. scriptures and that, uh -huh. you know, we have to follow scriptures to a certain extent because the Bible teaches us scriptures of history, scriptures of doctrine, scriptures of post prophecy. And in the history, we're looking at chronicles, we're looking at um, numbers, we're looking at roof, we're looking at things, areas like that. And we're talking about um, areas where God helped people and what, you know, how he, he um, made kings become kings, you know, and all of that. And then when we go into doctrine, we're talking about the repentance, the faith, the baptism, the, the laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment. We're talking about things like that. All of these areas, we still have to pray. We still have to pray, you know, uh -huh. because we want these things to come to pass. And in prophecy now, where we're talking about how God reflected, uh, how, how uh, it's like basically showing us a reflection of God's communication with humans, with us. And how we communicate with God. We have, we're doing that through faith. Through faith. Mm -hmm. But in that, the same time, this is where, you know, it's all connected. This is where um, that, that kingship has to be built as well while we're doing all of that. Because it's not just us coming and saying we are kings and we are this and we don't know the doctrine. And we don't know the history. And we don't mm -hmm. know, the, you know, but we want to come and prophesy. And we want to come and do, you know, it's, it's, it's areas like that. I think the other pastor is um, bring, trying to bring across for us. We have to know the word. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to know the word. So this is why it's, it's kind of a tricky situation when you say that people don't need to pray that much. I know what you mean. And I know you're not saying to turn away from prayer or to stop praying. 
but you have to it's a very tricky you know, or, or, or sort of thin line to walk on to say that because some people need to remain there some people need to remain there in the group some people need to remain there regardless in fact everybody need to remain there regardless what but what we're saying is you want us now to start acting on that kingship that God has given us and to seek dominion, go back in the scriptures, go back in history and look here and see that he has already done it. So now you want us to take authority and he has always wanted us to take authority. It's just that maybe people just, when you don't have enlightenment yet or you haven't received that, that's why it's so important for people to get mentored as well in the word when they get baptized, when they come become new believers. We have to so be careful, like um, where we go in with the information we're giving them, make sure that they understand it. And then, you know, there is a follow up and a follow up sort of thing and conversations and more prayer groups and things like that, because it's important that they don't get led astray because people mm -hmm. that join um, church just for them to to get blessings of money. People that join church just to get blessings to buy a car, to do this, to do that. You see where I'm coming with that? So they will come in thinking, okay, I have authority, I'm a king, I'm a... I don't know if you understand where I'm going with that. But no, I'm, I'm, follow, I'm to... following you. Everything is balance. I'm yes, following I'm you. Everything to... is balanced because like you said, um, mm -hmm. Apostle Emmanuel um, is, is saying, and he's right, the, priest, the priestly anointing of prayer, we definitely need it because you saw it in the life of Jesus. And I agree with him a hundred percent, and he agrees with me too. But then we don't have a balance because of the kingship anointing that so much teaching has not been done on us being kings and how to take authority. We really not live in a balanced life. Uh -huh. So I got mm -hmm. your point. So um, evangelist Magdalena, your hand was up, and then I see Sister Anna's hand is up. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, when we look at Luke chapter ten. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it said, but then it says, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons and are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan falling like a lightning flash from heaven. And then he told them, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your name is enrolled in the Lamb Book of Life. You see? So, so I'm see listening to you now. So how do you apply this to the discussion? Because he has given authority and power over all the powers of the enemy. But how do we, we, we walk in that authority and that power which he has given to us? Because the same way in the garden, he had given Adam authority and power to, to, to walk over, to do everything that he had supposed to do. But now he's saying that the devil is there. And he's still saying to his disciples, he has given them power because before Adam did not know the devil was in the garden. But now he's saying that because Satan has, he saw Satan in on earth now. So then now that, but he has given us power over Satan to do or to trample underneath. To that, we still have to pray to do it. We have to take authority, like you said, over the powers of the devil in order for us to manifest the kingdom because Satan is there and he has all that, uh, um, he has taken the power from Adam, but God is saying he restore the power Satan took from Adam. He has already restored it to us. So now we have to walk in the grace that he has given to us in the in the priestly grace and with all the different graces that he has given, he has given us power over all the enemy. And the enemy cannot hurt us. And again, it's going back to knowing, hallelujah, those that know their God will be able to do those exploits. If you do not know your power over the enemy, you do not know where you, who you are in God. You do not know. It comes back to knowledge of who you are, that you'll be able to walk in the three anointings. 
Amen. Amen. I I I agree because I've I've been listening to the power. Amen. I've been listening to that power, and I know it must be at all three levels. Um, yes, as a priest, pray, worship mm-hmm. God, do all what you're doing, do it to the full, to the fullness of it, to the best of your ability. Be the best priest you can be for God. Um, as a prophet, you go out there and you, and and you speak and you show the power of God. But I also want to see it as a as a king. I really mm-hmm. want to see it as a king. So, just so that then we can say, yes, Lord, I have accomplished it. We have lived a balanced life. Let me not add too much to it because I'm repeating myself on main things that I have said. Anna, come in. I see your hand. Amen, amen. Um, I've been listening to the encouragement and the contribution given on this um, subject. And um, Prophet, I started listening to you and with the prayer headlines that you said, okay, um, I agree with you 100%. I don't have a problem with prayer. I have a problem with how we pray. I have a problem with religious prayers. And when I entered the kingdom of God, I was converted. And I asked myself, for so long, I've been going to church. It's only praying, 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 praying. The first thing they taught me how to do in religion was to rage war. First thing I knew was get into the battlefield. And they taught you nothing of being into the battlefield. But when I get to know about the kingdom prayer, how Christ taught the, the disciples how to pray, just a simple prayer, and it was scriptured. The Lord gave me a great deal of revelation of how to pray. And now I can thank God that my perspective of prayer has been changed from religious prayer to kingdom prayer. And a lot of us, as you said, have been praying, 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 praying. And what is behind the prayer? We don't know how to dominate. And the main subject there is dominating. That's the authority that God gave unto us as soon as we enter the kingdom to dominate. Take full right, take full authority, be leader. Be ruler, be headship. That's what God gave to Adam, to be ruler, to rule over the garden, to headship and to headship Eve and the garden and to be the leader. But he gave, he gave that up. He gave it up to the enemy. He lost his, his, his um, authority. And this is what religion does now. It's like we come into religion, but we, we don't have the authority as we're supposed to have it as Christ stated. We don't, we don't know how to dominate. And this is where the problem is. We pray, as you said, but do we know how to dominate? Do we know how to take authority? We go to the enemy's camp and we say, Satan, we bind you in Jesus' name and we cast you out. But do we know which enemy that we are dealing with? We don't know. With wisdom, we should know what enemy we are dealing with. And we should know how to dominate against that enemy, lead and rule over that enemy for us to have our victory. It is a good subject this morning. And I thank God that I am no longer a religious person. This is what Jesus, Jesus stated. Do not pray like the publicans. Don't go on the street making repetition prayer, praying, praying every day the same thing, every day the same thing, every day, repeating, repeating, repeating those long prayers. It don't make sense in the sight of the Lord. Sometimes somebody just just go before the Lord and say a simple prayer like Jabez. Jabez just said a simple prayer and Jabez's prayer was heard. That was authority. He took authority in his prayer. But now when we pray, we forget that Christ taught the disciple a simple prayer and he taught them how to use the scriptures to pray and in the book of acts those fellows were so anointed and they took dominion they took full dominion in the book of acts they never showed in the book of acts where those apostles went to intercede or they pray they showed you all the power and the authority that christ gave unto them they used that in in the book of acts and they were able to dominate they were able to rule They were able to lead in the book of Acts and they gained great wealth. That was the power of domination. That's my word of encouragement, my contribution. Wow. Very powerful, Anna. Um, I see, uh, Minister Amanda, you have your hand up. 
afterwards, I'm going to take you into another area with our discussion that is looking at money. Oh, yes, definitely. We need to look at money in our discussion. Yes, Amanda, come in. Okay, Prophet, I think what I'm going to say might lead into that. Prophet, sometimes we get some money, right? You work, people, some people work for 20 years. And the way they spend their money, they don't have, they, they don't have anything. Um, they say umal umal de per se, about umal, whatever. But some people have money; they have a hundred dollars, and they can make that hundred dollars by the end of the week to two thousand dollars. Mm. You understand? Yes. Okay. They are, Abraham say um ten thousand dollars. We take it ten percent, and and give it to the church. And uh, we're spending ninety percent in the kingdom. What is the church teaching us about how to spend our money? How are they teaching us how people a pastor will go to school of theology, and he learn a, the, about the Bible, but they never teach him the way to handle the church money. Hmm. They don't teach you that in the school. So you go and you just do what you want with the money. You buy your big car. You buy your big house. They don't say how to money. They don't teach you finance in, in school of theology. Do they? I don't I've never gone there, but based on what I'm seeing, there's no 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 wisdom of how to teach money. Even growing up in my home is in a school I learned how to use my money. Nobody taught me how to spend my money. We need, hmm. we, need we need wisdom to know how to do things. You understand? Wisdom to know how to spend our money. We need wisdom to know that sometimes when we cook our food in the night, we have to put it in the fridge for the next day so we don't have to cook again to preserve our things. Where is the, the thing is, where is the knowledge that we pass it on to our children to teach them how to make their money work for them? Some people know about the stock market. Some people know about stocks being sold in UC Lake and everything. That's how people money grow in. They have accounts in the bank. You can put your money and after a period of years, you have 20,000 extra on your money. But who is educating us about how to spend the money we have? How to create a bank? How to make a school? Who is teaching the kingdom of God how to build those things? You see the seven days people have their, their, their school. Who is teaching us how, how it's been taught that we can build our kingdom? The, the older people, everybody just have their money sitting in the bank. They never taught us. They, nobody never taught us finance in the kingdom of God. They only take pay out 10%. Yes, Back to you, prophet. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. I'm muted. Oh, sorry. sorry. I was muted. Amanda, thanks so much for your contribution. But well, you just helped me introduce the next point of dominion. I'm going to show you all a scripture, but uh, I also want you to see a revelation here. Uh, now we looking at the the areas of man is two. Now we operate in the same um, three levels or three graces, if you want to put it: the kingship, um, um, the prophetic, and the and the and the priestly anointing. Now, like I said. There are many believers who are praying for money. They are praying, oh Lord, give me money, give me money, give me money. The priest, the priest is praying for money, praying, 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 praying for money. The prophetic also declaring or appointing where you can get money. But the kingship, again, I'm not really seeing it in the body of Christ where we are dominating, showing the world we have money. We don't have to, we don't need your system. We don't need your jurisdiction over us, the banks or whatever. I think we are failing in this area too, in the areas of monies. So let me show you a scripture here um, in First Timothy. Uh, and I definitely want us to look at this in our discussion here. First Timothy chapter three, verse, verse is one. Now that is for the elders, that's an instruction um, Paul gave to Timothy, and Paul is giving instruction to the elders, pastors, or those persons in charge. And he's speaking of money. But listen to this from verse 1. He says, this is a trustworthy saying. Now, you need to mark the words of Paul. When Paul used words like trustworthy saying, he didn't say, thus says the Lord. Are you all following me? 
He didn't say, God, tell me to tell you that. Follow scriptures. This is a trustworthy saying. So that means it's a belief. Um, it's a belief among, um, among the people of his time. Hello? And Paul also believed that. It's a belief among the church of his time. This is a trustworthy saying. So when people come and say, oh, God said that, you have to be read the scriptures and read it well. This is a trustworthy saying. So that's a belief. That doesn't mean um, it's correct with everybody. Trustworthy, maybe you can take it. He says, the one who would be an elder, a noble task desires, he, therefore, an elder must be blameless. Listen to this, blameless. Let's underline this. I just want to show you something up here. Play with the words, go over them. An elder must be blameless. So then nobody can blame you for this because you want to be an elder, blameless. So that means this person is always in whatever the talk or the heat or the talk of the day or the tongue. Everybody has to be talking about you because for you to be blameless, witnesses will have to bring forward their cases and then you will have to prove that they are wrong. An elder has to be blameless. That doesn't mean he's living the perfect life. Has to be blameless. You say something about me? Um, I'll get witnesses or you bring the witnesses. So I have to prove to whatever body I have to answer to that I am not guilty. An elder ought to be blameless. The husband of one wife. So that means if you have more than one wife as an elder, you're not blameless. Somebody can blame you. Stable. What do you all understand by the word stable? Somebody look at the word stable for me, please. <clears throat> Take your dictionary, look at the word stable. Do that fast. I'll come back to it because I definitely need to look at that word. He has to be blameless. Husband of one wife, we have no problem. But he has to be stable because we're looking at all three graces there. How could a man be stable? Can a man be stable just by praying? Hello? Can a man or a woman be stable or be blameless just by praying? You'll pray and they'll still blame you. But you have to prove that what they are saying is not correct. Amen. Let's continue. When you get a minute stable, let me know. He has to be what? Sensible. No problem. Let's look at it. Respectable. Uh, you see where the grace is moving? He has to be what? Respectable. That means everybody have high respect for you. Amen. Hospitable to strangers. We don't have a problem there. Uh, many of us pass, we pass in that test. Many, eh? I didn't say all. Hospitable to strangers and teachable. No problem here. But come back to the, um, to come back to stable. What's the meaning of stable here? Somebody give me that meaning here. He said that people not using phone. Go into Google. If I do it, I don't. I'm, I'm recording this program. I really don't want to shift from the screen too much. Go into Google and look at the meaning of stable because I will. I will. I will come back to it. Now, I'm. I'm. I'm going to verse three here. He must not. He must not drink excessively. You know what religion say? And I'm not making this an excuse for somebody able to drink. They said to you, Paul said to Timothy, he must not drink. Don't drink. Period. Well. The scriptures did not say that. He said, do not drink excessively. So I really don't know what is <clears throat> the limit to drinking. But then I have scriptures that say, a prophet should not drink wine. And I don't like my head spinning anyway. So, so then we, we, we're looking at where we, you know, this man has to dominate. Because this is an outside reputation. That, that's what God is looking at here. That's what Paul is bringing up here. Drinking excessively, you're not sober, then you know people lose respect for you because higher up, you see, he has to be respectable. Do we see that here? Amen. So if you cannot control your drinking, then you lose your respect. Do we see that? Very good. Or be a violent person. Now, here, here is where we cannot dominate. You're a violent person. You cannot dominate. But instead, be what? Gentle. Mm, be gentle. And here is my scripture. This is my line, the clause I want to 
bring to you. He must not be argumentative or love money. Magdalena is the same spirit. The argumentative spirit and the love of money is the same spirit. Wow. So somebody will say, my husband is argumentative, but he does not love money. Well, that is the same spirit. If he's argumentative, he can pretend as he wants. If she's argumentative, she can pretend as she wants. She's also a lover of money. Because there are people who do not have money, but they still love money. Don't mind it. They love money. The little that they have, they don't give to God. How can God trust to give them more? Somebody give me, give God praise. Let me hear your voice. Being argumentative and the love of money is the same spirit. And then you know what we do? We go back and we blame the rich man. We say, oh, the rich man, they love money because they have money. That's not true. There are a lot of poor people who love money. And that's why God cannot even make them rich. Because they love money. And how do you know they love money? They are very argumentative. But prophet, I don't agree with you. Because I am argumentative sometimes. Uh, well, let me tell you. The word argumentative there is they creating, when they get the scriptures, rather they preach the scriptures in the purest sense to build people, they, they preach the scriptures in more to create confusion. That's because remember, he's speaking to an elder. They don't bring truth or light to help people. But they, they come with texts and scriptures that's very argumentative, especially on doctrines. I know somebody said something like doctrine. A lot, of, a lot of persons who follow church doctrines are very argumentative, you know. They really don't follow that word. They say, my church don't believe that. But they don't tell you what they would believe, what God says in the word. So they are very argumentative. And those people are lovers of money. And bring it back now to religion. If you're not preaching a solid word, if you're not preaching the word of God as pure as you are receiving it from the spirit of God and diluted word of God, that church have to be a church that will love money and then all forms of corruption will begin to happen or is already happening in churches like that that are very argumentative on the word of God. They don't preach the word of God as they supposed to preach it, to give people the liberty and the power that God required that people should have. But they are collecting types and offering. They are lovers of money. Let me hear what you have to say on this point. Wow. I know you say, oh, so, prophet, so I didn't brother realize Jeremiah, that. Was, sorry, uh, brother yes. Jeremiah was the one who brought in the doctrine. I was just mm -hmm. trying to encompass all the different areas Okay, yes, yes, that yes, we need to yes. be thinking of in regards yes, to yes. um serving God and yes. your doctrines. I'm not talking about going through it exactly as maybe like a Roman Catholic Church will do it and this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, I am not a religious person, I'm mm -hmm. just a lover of God. Mm -hmm. The point is, in our Bible, we will see it, we will come across eternal judgment, we will mm -hmm. come across the laying of hands and healing people. Okay, that mm -hmm. is something that we will come across. So these are the areas, baptism, we will come across that. It is good for you to mm -hmm. give your children unto the Lord, things like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? So these are yes. the areas I was bringing across when I talk about the doctrines, because mm -hmm. that's where they, that's what they encompass anyway. Okay, yes. so it's yes. not a, yes. a matter of um, trying to say that we have to stick to that. No, but we have to be knowledgeable of these areas in order for us to show some of that power that we have because if we don't know scriptures if we don't mm -hmm. know these areas just like the devil watching people he'll tell you who are you he knows jesus christ but does he know you you understand mm -hmm. because you don't pick up your bible for you to study you don't you see where i'm coming from from mm -hmm. this perspective just drawing all of these areas together i'm saying that you both are correct you are mm -hmm. leading in a different direction where God is going right now. Because a lot of the time, we tend to dwell on the historic things alone. And we think that this is the same way God is going to move again. Yes, he still mm -hmm. moves again in these ways for some people. But he moves in different ways. He never changes, no. But he's yes. a God of pattern. I personally heard a pastor preaching that already. God is a God of pattern. When he gives you a pattern for you to follow, follow the pattern and get your blessing. Mm -hmm. Point blank. 
Point okay. blank. Well, your point is taken, um, but I was not um, responding to what you said. These are points of discussion, but I'm happy that you know you remembered you said that. And, and, and all of us, we have to be aware of what we are listening to or what people are preaching to us. Because a lot of preachings, if it's not clear, if it's not the word of God, and um, 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 my good friend can tell you that, um, Apostle Emmanuel can tell you that, if it's not the word of God, then it's, it's, it's going to create an argument among people. Are you all there with me? It has to be clear in scripture. Now, I'm saying this as a guide to you. If, if you believe a doctrine or they are preaching something to you that's not clear to you in scripture, and then you are part of that organization, and let's say you're paying your tithe or you're putting your offering there, that organization that they are not helping you, it's not been a blessing to you. So the spirit of mammon can easily take over an organization like that where, you know, they make so much money there, they even forgetting their number one responsibility is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So you don't really see persons arising or God raising ministries there, you know, genuine ministries to help and build that body. Because if a genuine ministry is going to rise there, they're definitely going to kill it. They will stifle that ministry because then their goal is not to build the people. So I showed you that warning that Paul is passing on to young Timothy. And Timothy is a young pastor. And Paul is sharing, you know, what money can do. And then we're looking at the other characters. I wanted you to, I want somebody to tell me um, um, what's the Google meaning of being stable? Uh, did anybody get it? Did you Google that? I still want to see. It says, therefore, an elder must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, that's under the subject all by itself. Why wife? Are you referring to an elder? Well, they were, men were holding um, yeah, those is men were holding authority. Amen. And this is a young church too. Men who um who are at the forefront. So all positions, men were holding it. So the elder of one wife. I will not make a doctrine out of that. We some churches have made a doctrine that um men should be in authority and women should be sitting down and a whole set of you need to get into deeper history before you make history, uh, before you make doctrines. But let's look at the word stable. Did anybody look at the meaning of the word stable? If one has to be stable, what does it mean? Okay, next time I'll have to work with my dictionary, but I thought you could have just Googled that for me. All right, next person. Um, anyone has a point to share? Because I have one more point to bring up. Pastor Emmanuel, um, uh, Apostle Emmanuel, are you there? Is there anything you, you, you want to share? All right. Uh, what, I, what I want to say is, um, as we share the gospel, let us try to balance the informations and don't make it look as if one part is more important than the other. Because uh, in as much as we are trying to raise people to make heaven, we should also make them to be conscious of where they are. And uh, One more thing I want to say, like our sister was saying, a lot of Christians, the reason a lot of Christians are poor is because one, Whoever is preaching or teaching to them has not been able to translate the, the scripture to realities in their life. If you look the examples of Jesus, Jesus translated the gospel before the eyes of the people. When they needed money, he tell Peter, I said, go to this river, catch a fish, open your mouth, you see a coin. So until we are able to translate the scripture to realities, that is what we convince a lot of people. And that is why people are running after money. Because contentment is not being taught. We try to avoid money. And that is what is being used to, to divert a lot of people into all kinds of things. And that's why prosperity may say, look as if it's the best. And at, at the same time, it's destroying a lot of people. So until we preach that money is good and it's important. But how you make the money is what matters. Okay? And... Um, where contentment needs needs to be taught uh, to the people, okay? So this way, we're able to help the, the, the current Christians that is growing up, 
because until we're able to do that, we'll keep having a lot of wolf and sheep proteins in the body of Christ and thereby um, having more poor people in the church as though Christianity is a, is, a, is a gathering of poor people. That, but that's not the truth because we have not been able to teach the people the truth. So when the people who come prosperity start preaching, you see them, they, they rush to that place because the average person is hungry. He wants to live in a good house. What they see on TV, a lot of them want to live that kind of life. What they see on social media, they want to live that kind of life. But until you are able to preach it to them and tell them you can get it, but this is how you can get it. That way to help them. Now, let me also, as I round up here, there's somebody I'm, I'm praying for in Fiji. He has a lot of business concept, ideas, he's a Christian. This concept has been in his mind for more than five years or 10 years, but he has not been able to translate it to realities. And I say, I'm going to teach you how to translate it to realities. You know, and he was so happy. So these are some of the things I want us to be able to and as I round up here, sir, prayer is the key. Let us not be deceived. I've heard people say it and I've, and I've challenged them and I've corrected them where they said uh, prayer warriors are the poorest people. It's a lie. It's not. It depends on what you are praying for and how you are praying. But whatever you are praying and how you pray, you must try to live a righteous life, walk in faith and act in faith after you pray. Okay, so prayer, the knowledge, the authority, everything are all in one. And Paul said, is it was it Paul that said it? He said, all what we are doing is for the edification of the body of Christ. Whether you're a prophet, a pastor, evangelist, uh, whatever it is, is for the edification. That means whatever we all are doing are different and is for one purpose. To lift up the people and to prepare them to make the kingdom god help us amen hallelujah thank you so much my brother it's good to have um the balance but these are mature believers beyond these are strong meat that i give to them is there is no there is no there is no argument um neither um um, one is opposing any side. Both sides are so important, what he shared and what I am sharing with you. And like he said to you, we need to have it in proper perspective. We're not saying that you should not pray, but we have three graces that we operate under God. But what we are saying, we want balance in those three graces. Because if, if we are just praying, 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 then the book of, of, of James who said, faith without works is dead. And that's why James is saying that, because it's a young church. And if that young church, I, Amanda, I see your hand, I'm coming to you. If that young church will just major on just, okay, we're just going to pray to get everything. James is saying, you're wrong. We, we need some action from, from this church. We need you to go out there and do some things. Faith without works is dead. That's where, you know, this scripture, that's the whole context of this scripture. Go out there and do something. Don't just stay home and pray. Now, that's what we are saying with the three graces, being um, the kingship, you know, the, 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 the priestly, and then the prophetic. We want to see the balance because in the kingship, the kingship, you know, when the disciples went out there and, and demonstrated the kingship, they said, these are the men who turned our world upside down. They did not say that because they were praying. They said that because those guys went out there and they demonstrated it. Somebody gave God praise. Amen. They took over territories. They were running their tongue. So they said, these are the men who turned our world upside down. I don't know. I see two hands up before we get to our last point, last point of discussion. Amanda, your hand was up first. Go ahead. Prophet, I am in Martinique right now, right? And yes. I went to a church, right? A young man. And the man was doing great. He's delivering people, everything. But he then he started talking about finance, that he owed a building and much money and whatever. And he had a packed church. The church had people. But when I came in, there are just a few people coming. But and they, some of them was consistent. The man was doing deliver, deliverance. But the people came and they took for them from the man of God and they, they did not give. And what Mike Lucas was telling me, when people come to church, it's mostly poor people that come into church. But yes, poor people come into church. But you know what happened? God always gives us our daily bread. 
And I was and in the daily bread that God gave us. He said, give 10%. If everybody in that time gave a 10%, the man would be able to pay their rent. Some people just put in a couple cents in the offering. The man for the Sunday, 40 euro he make and make in, you know? And mm -hmm. people come in, they're getting healed. They, the man praying for people, they heal. Then after they're not coming to church again, because it's quick fix, fix they want, they get they are muzzling. They... they are muzzling the ox, Amanda. The Bible said, do not muzzle the ox whilst he tread the corn. That's what they, they're muzzling him. And prophet... The church closed down right now. Mm -hmm. Where away me right now? I'm on online. Usually I would be in church city physically, but I thank mm -hmm. God closed down and I right now doing my ministry. I would do I would do the same thing, definitely. If you are he being healed and the power of God is moving in the place and people don't want to give, then Jesus will go to another tongue, maybe and minister. There is no faith. Um, I, I, it's not fair to the man of God. He can he can't be ministering and they have to worry about how he paying the bills. Definitely. The man got, got a job and he said he's not going to take his work money and give to the church to pay church for people to come to church. And I agree. I agree with him. I would have done the same thing. Yes. I so I got I I get your point. And that's why we need the balance, my people. But it will never come if we are robbing the Lord or we're robbing God's servants of what is due unto them. Remember that it will not come. You will never see the kingship anointing working on your life where you are dominating. You will not see that. So many of many times, you know, they stay in the priestly anointing, pray, 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 pray. They're not honoring the servants of God. They're not honoring the Lord. But a lot of those prayers too are not answered by God because those persons are not living the life. They're not walking according to the guideline of scripture. Yes, um, Evangelist Magdalena, I see your hand and then I have one more point um, to bring up. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that, like Amanda was saying that they are not taught back to knowledge again. The, those that know their God. You see, you have to know God in order for this thing. You have to be taught. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So knowledge is important. That's why, and right now, what I'm realizing is we have no teachers. We, everybody wants to be the prophet and the apostle, but nobody wants to teach. So our people are going astray for lack of knowledge. And the other thing I want to talk about prayer we talk about prayer. We have to pray. Yes, we need to pray. But Jesus told the disciples to pray. And he gave us the different scriptures in the Bible of how to pray, how to bind, how to loose, how to pull. How to stick, still taking authority. Because if you are praying, like begging God, that's not prayer. Begging God is not prayer. You know, demanding God is not prayer. You know, so God have... They really still need to teach on how to pray because Jesus taught his disciples how to pray and he gave authority on the, of how to pray to get results. So just praying, 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 people praying 24 7 to hold their prayer and no results because we do not know how to pray. So we pray like the scribes and the Pharisees pray, 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 pray. Jesus. We need to teach people the prayer that the, the prayer that produces results. Amen. Amen. Wow. We need to teach people the prayers that produces results. I like I like the conclusion of this definitely. All right. So um so we are getting we are getting the point here of the free graces. And I'm telling you, since that is so evident in the life of believers, you could have a man of God who is fiery for God. And he's walking and he's doing everything, but he could be poor, have nothing to give his family, have nothing, you understand, to give to a stranger. Now, you will say at the end of the day, this man will go to God, to God and you say, Lord, what are you doing? But God will tell this man, what are you doing? Because at the end of the day, this man is worthy of his hired. That's what the scripture says. The fact that he comes to speak to you, he's hired. He's worthy of his hired. In other words, you don't know the value of this man. You don't even know the cost of it. All you have to do, obey God. Obey the spirit of God. If God says to you, bless this man, just bless him. Because you don't know the value of this man to you. But you know what we do? We say, uh-uh. Leave it for other people to do. No. You 
have to obey the spirit of God by blessing the servants of the Lord. And in that way, God now can move you to what we call kingship anointing. It's not something, the kingship anointing does not come by you deciding to go there, you know. It is a realm God moves you to. Somebody give God praise. Amen. It's not you just deciding to take over. I'm going to have buildings. I'm going to have this now. A lot of times people do those things at the expense of poor people. You get me? They do those things at the expense of poor people. I'm telling you, buy all those buildings and send them and take so much loan. That's not the way you do it. The way God does it, it happens through favor. Everybody say favor. 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 That's how favor. God does it. Not at the expense of poor people killing them to do this thing. Amen. Just like in Acts, you know, many were added to the church. They were added. Now, when, when they are added, their wealth is also added. Their property is also added. So, so when you see people are added, wealth are also added. So God does... These, those moves, they are done by the favor of the Lord. But we have to be faithful in all three. Faithful as the priest, you know, who offer prayers and sacrifices before God. You have to be faithful as the prophet. Thus is the Lord and showing forth the power of God. You also have to be faithful as the king, amen, doing it from an honest heart. Not doing it because, you know, you want yourself to be seen, heard, or be recognized, but you want the kingdom of God to be seen. You want the kingdom of God to be heard. You want the kingdom of God to be recognized. God puts you over many. Uh, let me, um, I want to conclude uh, with, with, with this other verse of scripture um, in my discussion with you today. Like I said today, I'm using an open mic. Open mic meaning that anytime you could come in. Okay. I'm still using Timothy because I like the instruction that Timothy and um, Paul, sorry, Paul gave to Timothy. So listen, li listen to this, my people. Hallelujah. Evangelist Magdalena, you have your hand up. I'm not hearing you. You are, you must be muted. Magdalene, did you put your hand up? We're not hearing you. Um, you. We're not hearing you on the Zoom. Okay, I was missing. I was still saying it's the same thing as knowledge again, because the Bible says that you must never go before a man of God, a prophet empty-handed. So why are so many people going to the prophet empty-handed? You see, we are not taught how to give, but we want to receive. Everybody wants to receive. They know how to receive by going, but they're not being taught as to is in giving that you receive. Everything comes through giving. You understand? So I think that is where the church have lapsed because they say they want to act for money. But if you give the, the teachings, then people would know that they have to give. Because even in the Bible days, they knew that never go before a man of God empty-handed. When they go to the, the soothsayers, they don't go empty-handed. Why they know to go to the soothsayers and they must not go empty-handed? They know when they join the Lord that the person of the salary belongs to the Lord. They know all these things that they have to give. And even when they give that, they, even the Lord demands them to give, that they must give. They know about the giving part in the occult, but the church must not give because the devil have tricked the people and tell them, oh, you are giving to the pastor, but not speaking to them that they are giving for the breakthrough. They are giving for the deliverance. They are giving because the, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual why are we not taught somebody fooling us that don't give to the church? So the church remains poor and they become wealthy. And they can do all the evils and the church can do nothing to preach the gospel. So we need to teach. Amen. Amen. Yes, I, I, I got your point. Um, Anna, you had your hand up. Go ahead quickly. Yes, Prophet. Um, Sister Mag, I totally agree with what you said. We were taught how to give, but not in the right perspective. Because the scripture verse you said there about um, nobody not supposed to go before a prophet empty-handed. That's um, I heard it. Um, I think after I got to know y'all, I got to know about that scripture. But I never heard that scripture in church, going to church all the while. I never heard that scripture. I only heard the scripture in the book of Malachi. It's been quoted all the time, and even from the poor person, they would ask to bring in tithe. 
So that's the right point that you make that they never taught us how to give in the right perspective. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I got I got your point, both of you. Okay, so my last point is uh, the title uh, on this as a good servant of Jesus Christ. So if you want to be a good servant of Jesus Christ, Paul is pointing some, um, bringing some points here to Timothy, which is really coming to us. He said, if you continue to point these things out to the brothers, you remember the things that he was telling him, uh, like 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 we shared before. What are the things we you're looking at? Now the spirit says clearly that in the last days some people will abandon the faith by following deceitful spirits, the teachings of demons. Okay, so he's he's telling Timothy what type of people he'll be facing there, and the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences have been burnt by a hot iron. They will try to stop people from marrying and from eating certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing should be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Um, because it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So in that context, Paul now is saying to Timothy, Listen to this here. Yeah. If you continue to point these things, the things we just read there, out to the brothers, you will be a good servant of the Messiah. Hello, let me show you this. Let's underline it because there is that position here. A good servant. It was a father who said about concerning Jesus, this is my good and faithful servant. So there is a position of being a good servant. Not just a servant, but being a good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what everybody says. They want to hear this. But definitely, you need to oppose evil. You need to speak against evil when you see it. That's the only way you will be a good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people, they keep quiet when they see evil. They say, that's not my business anyway. Me, I'm not going to talk because I don't want nobody to blame me. No, you will not be a good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. They said, no, I don't want to be nobody's black book. I let the people do their thing. I have nothing to say. I'm not going to speak evil. I'm not going to speak wrong. No, you will not be a good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are called to Timothy to oppose it. Let's continue. Good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nourished. How? Nourished by the words of faith. You see it? So if you are nourished by the word of faith, why would you keep quiet? Why would you keep silent when you have to speak for God? That means you have not been nourished or you are malnourished. Amen. So, so it then says, nourish what? By the words of faith and by, I underline, I highlighted it by healthy teaching. You see it? Healthy teaching. So there is a teaching that's not healthy. Just like there are foods in the natural that are not healthy for us. There are teachings that are not healthy. They're going to cause spiritual death. Oh, somebody give God praise. Say, Father, give me healthy teachings. Lord, I need healthy teachings in my life. And that's what we see. We, that's what we, we, we are giving you here. We want to point you to healthy teachings. So, Paul, so there is something called healthy teaching. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Healthy teaching that you have followed closely. You see? So all what the instruction Tim Paul was giving to Timothy was healthy teaching. Oh my God. Anna, I see your hand. Come on, come. This is open mic. Y'all can talk. I'm not hearing you. If you are muted, but I saw your hand went up. Okay, oh, verse seven. Yes, go ahead. A while ago. Yeah, when I had to make the contribution. Okay, all right, no problem. Okay, verse seven. So after you, you receive the healthy teaching from Paul, so we're supposed to be receiving healthy teaching. He said, do not, do not have anything, sorry, do not have anything to do with godless, let's look at it, godless, that means God not in it, godless, do not have anything to do with it, and we have, we follow them in the church, godless myths. Something that's not true. Myths and fables of old women. You know, that's not the word of God. Tradition. 
living by the tradition of elders, old women. Oh, my mother, that's, that's what my mother tell me. My mother always tell me, when people do you, do them back. That's fables of old women. The Bible says, forgive. So but give God praise. My mother tell me, don't take nonsense from no man. God tell me, submit to your husband. Woman, submit to your husband. No, that's not the way my mother raised me. My mother tell me, don't bow to no man. Don't take no nonsense. I understand, fine. But then you still have to be trained in terms of living a marriage life. Um, wives, submit to your husbands um, in the Lord. Now, if you take what your mother told you, I'm asking you, did her marriage work? Was she ever married? You see? So Paul said, instead, train yourself to be godly. Now, here is a responsibility we like to put on the servants of the Lord. Oh, the servant of God has to train me, but you also have to train yourself. Train yourself to be godly by you not taking those old fables. And uh, it's not what, oh, your mother say, and uh, not what your father say. You have high respect for your father, high respect for your mother. And you keep doing everything they say, but you will not do. And, and I don't mean nothing personal against Anna. I'm only using her name. Because I'm using anybody, I can say my wife, I can say Jerome too. Let me say Jerome because some of you all, I, I know how you think already if I mention your name. So Jerome, you have to train yourself to be godly. You understand? By what, how? By you not living by those old myths and those fables. Now myths are lies. You know, they tell you, oh, it's, a, it's a church doctrine. One save, always save. And so oh, you're going to preach one save, always save. But you never really study this thing to see if it's really the scriptures, which I, I have studied the scriptures. One save is not always saved. Because then Paul said, some were made shipwrecked. How could some be made shipwrecked if they were already there? And you tell me, one save, always save. Nah, it's, it doesn't work. And I have other scriptures to prove that it doesn't work. I went to one of the Billy Graham um, um ministry session with uh with one of the pastors one time and i told him i will never believe that and i gave him all my scriptures and he told me well you cannot be part of this organization it's about evangelism if you will not believe that i said you can remove my name because i will never believe that okay so it's not that i could not say with that organization because they they, they win in souls and i like about soul winning and all those things but at the end of the day at the end of the day if something is wrong it means there are many more things in it that's wrong. So verse 8 is what I want to conclude on. It says physical, imagine Paul is saying that, physical exercise is limited value. It did not say whatever you do in terms of building yourself in the physical is not good. It tells you physical exercise is limited value, meaning that it has value. But it's limited because that body will perish. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Because the body is limited. It has limited value. But the one that is eternal, listen to this. But godliness is very dear. You see it? Godliness is very dear. So I believe that's a spiritual exercise. Just being godly. Not religious. You see? There's a difference here because somebody said to me, oh, you are godly. I said, no, you are religious. Because if what you are living by is not the word of God and you are a spiritual person, you are just religious, but you're not godly. So godliness is to be like God, is to think like God, behave like God, talk like God. That's godliness. Somebody give God praise. A pledge of life, both there and here is a pledge of life, both here and there. So I stop on this air, uh, this discussion, and I want to say to all of us, hallelujah, that we definitely need a balance, hallelujah, in the free graces that God has given to us. Because as we talk kingdom, many people are saying, oh, kingdom, thy kingdom come. But do you know right now is the work, we have the work to do. I cannot just go and pray, thy kingdom come. And I'm not willing to go out there to demonstrate the kingdom. So, but give God praise. And even us as kingdom people, we have to come and talk money. We have to come and talk resources. How we can pull resources together mm -hmm. to work for God. We are so isolated whilst the world is so united. Look at it. 
Christians put all their monies in a basket, but they can never trust um, um, each other to do business. How many Christians have business together? Tell me. Go, you run a survey on this. Tell me how many Christians, believers. Let me talk believers because there is a difference between Christian believers and kingdom citizens. One of these is I'll share the difference with you. The When you are being a Christian does not mean you follow God. Sure. Being a Christian does not mean you follow in God. A Christian could be a conviction on somebody who's going to church. Hello? Because the church, religious church, preach to them, if you get baptized, you are a Christian. So I can come to a religious church, see a girl that I like there, take all the teachings of the baptism, get baptized, marry that girl, and take my girl out of that church. Does that make me a Christian? Because I came with that mindset already. Hello? So, but I don't want to go too much into that because when you say Christian, when you say you're Christian, that doesn't mean you're a child of God. But I tell you, it, it happens all the time. A guy comes into the church and vice versa. A girl comes into the church, see a guy that, that, that she likes. She goes to the altar and cry. She gets baptized. She told the pastor she's in love with the guy. She wrote the guy the most beautiful letter. Get married and pull the guy out of the church. And, and, she, and she will never continue with God. You get me? <clears throat> but all of us call her a Christian because she came out of the water. So that is my definition. That doesn't mean because you're a Christian, you're a child of God. Okay? Number two, a believer. Being a believer, you have to believe the major doctrines of the Bible, not your church. To be a believer, that's how I define a believer. Do you believe the major doctrines of the virgin birth, Jesus Christ? Amen. The crucifixion, burial, resurrection. You know, I can bring so many of the major doctrines. So if you don't believe the major doctrine, how you tell me you're a believer? And now, <laughs> being a kingdom citizen is the other one. You are, you, are you in the kingdom? Do you believe the major doctrine? Of, you know, God gave you authority hmm? and you have dominion huh? and you serve in Jesus Christ as a kingdom citizen, which I can explain that even, even further. So then you call yourself, then you tell me, okay, you are in the kingdom. So then I call you a kingdom ambassador. So those things, don't let people just throw it at you. People like to throw those things at you. And a lot of times those things are never explained. You don't even know the meaning. We can't even go as calling, uh, um, 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 calling somebody brother and calling them sister. At what stage, at what stage do I call somebody brother? Because they go to the same church? Wrong. The devil is going to the same church too. Well, call him brother. Hello? Amen. You don't call somebody brother because you all sit on the same seat. You don't call somebody sister because you all sit on the same seat and you all sing from the same hymn now. Or because you sit and get baptized. The Bible said, by the fruits, you shall know them. Amen. The whole church can call you brother. The whole church can call you sister. If I choose not to call you brother, not to call you sister, I can call you sir, and I can call you madam. Hello? That's the liberty that we need when we follow in God. Know who you call him sir. Know who you have to call madam. I know who you have to call brother. Know who you call him sister. And that is your right. No pastor. No pastor, and I repeat, no apostle, no prophet can force you to call somebody brother if you have conviction that this person have done you something that you ought not to call them brother. Nobody can force you to call them brother. Hello? The same way. God is even forcing you to call him father. Amen. But if God is good to you, and you know you are serving him, call him father. But the Lord said, why call me Lord, Lord? And what's the action? Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I have asked you to do? So that means, God, don't call me Lord. Because you not obey me, don't call me Lord. So why? Why? Why should I go to church? And you telling me, call everybody in that church brother, sister. No, I call him everybody brother, sister. I call in you, brother and sister. When you live the life, you show me you are a true brother, you are a true sister. Other than that is sir and madam. Don't take me wrong. I'm very radical. Yes, anyone have anything to share on this? Go right ahead. I know the talk is hot, but we are closing. Nobody has anything to share. So from today, I hope you understand why 
you know, and don't use words loosely and just call. Another thing that they, they, they do again, they want to call people father. They go to a church, but the man say he's your father because he's teaching you John 3, 16. He's preaching Romans 3, 23 to you. He's, read, he's doing Bible study to you and tell everybody call him father. You call the man father. You know what a father is? A father, a true father is there for you when you are done. A true father has your back to make sure that he sees about your growth and development. God is not my bad guys are calling everybody father. Listen to me. Religion. Religion have a soul. Hello? It's not only the priest. Before they used to call the priest father, but right now a lot of those, those evangelical um, Pentecostal churches. When those pass, when those when they come and they give you two prophetic word and they believe that come to pass, they already say the your father. So all of you have to bring them, oh your father, your father, especially the Africans. I wish I had my African brother there. I would ask him about that if he has father. All of them have father. Oh, father, this father, that father. One time I had to tell an African, he came to pray on my uh, group that I have. He said, In the name of my father, and he said the name of his father, uh, whoever that his father is. And it wasn't Jesus. I said, brother, that prayer you post on that group, they remove it. Because that man you call father there, we are not in agreement. I don't know that man. Delete it. You know, rather he, dele he deleted himself. He moved it. And I move it. And I block him out of that group. Because he is very uncivilized. No respect. So because he came in the name of his father was some man in Africa. Maybe the man was great to him. He came and prayed for us in the name of that man. I said, never. Don't come on that on that group with your father. So a lot of those Africans, when they come, they have father. I wish my good friend was the Emmanuel. I would ask him if he had father. Because one thing about me, once we have open mic, everything is out. And that's why I like the open mic. Because you get a chance to question people. You get a chance to oppose and ask questions and make comments. We're not going to have no close mic. Who close mic where people come say their things and they run and deceive you. You say your thing, you will definitely be questioned on what you say. People's life and destiny is at stake over everything. Yes, Evangelist Magdalene, I turn over to you. You have something to say and back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We like the hot subject. That's a hot subject because even in St. Lucia now, I'm hearing everybody saying, My father, my no more, no more pastor or apostle or prophet is father. Everybody has become father. When we go back to the scripture, the word of God says, call no man father. So, and now everybody's a father. Everybody. I want to talk to a pastor concerning that. He agreed. But by the time I feel it was finished, he talking to me about um, my father. I said, which was my father? I said, I have no father but Jesus. And the father in heaven is my father. And I'm, I'm saying to him, why are you calling people father? Why are you all around people calling father? You all are not mentors anymore. There are no more mentors. The word mentor is not a word anymore. You become somebody's father because you mentor them, you know? So we have to be very careful. So I said to him, I think we'll have to go back to the priest and apologize because we, we used to taunt them by saying, why are you calling you the priest father? So why you all are now in the same boat as the priest calling, making all the church people call your father. Oh, my father, my father, everywhere you, even St. Lucia, everywhere now, my father. A little church you go to, they are my father. So I think it is rubbing off from Africa. It has rubbed into the Caribbean and into St. Lucia by calling people father. Call no, uh, there's a reason why Jesus gave that scripture. Call no man father. And he made mention of the father, which is your earthly father, that one that sperm, the sperm donor that gave you the father and he gave the other father is his father in heaven. There's only two fathers he mentioned. So we have to be very particular about who we call father. The Bible says, talks about the doctrines of demons. So we have to be careful with those doctrines of demons as well. Yeah, we have to be taught, but the Bible says we have to be sober and we have to be vigilant in all those teachings that are coming forth in this season. We have to